Hey, hey, good people. Arthur Moore is here. I hope all is well. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at infinite limits. So we want to determine infinite limits from left, from the left and from the right and find and sketch the vertical asymptotes of the graph of a function. So this ex first example here, we have consider the function f of x equals 3 divided by x minus 2. Now, since we have that x minus 2 in our denominator, that variable in our denominator, we know we have some type of discontinuity. Uh, and since that x minus 2 cannot be canceled with a factor in our numerator, that tells me that this is a vertical asymptote. So to determine what that vertical asymptote is, all we do is set our denominator equal to 0 and solve. So the vertical asymptote is the line x equals 2. And you can see on this graph here that we have um, that we have this line here uh, that represents our vertical asymptote. Okay, so uh, now as we look at the limit of this function, as x approaches 2 from the right, as x approaches 2 from the right, we see that this function begins to increase, 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 and continues to increase forever. So it goes to positive infinity. So the limit does not actually exist. Uh, the limit goes towards positive infinity and it increases without bound is what we normally say. Uh, if we look at this from the right or from the left here, this thing begins to decrease, decrease, decrease. And we see that that this line decreases without bound as x approaches 2 from the left. Okay, so it approaches negative infinity, so the limit does not exist again. All right, so now we want to look at finding vertical asymptotes. So the key to finding vertical asymptotes is to first uh, factor your denominators if possible and see if the denominator uh, will cancel or simplify with a factor in the numerator. If you have a variable uh, that's in a factor in your denominator that will not simplify with the variable uh, or factor in your numerator, then we have a vertical asymptote. So number 13 here, we have f of x equals one over x squared. I have x squared in my denominator. Therefore, if I set x squared equal to zero and take the square root of both sides, we just get x equals zero and x equals zero would be a vertical asymptote. And you must, if it asks for the vertical asymptote, remember the vertical asymptote is a line. So you must write the equation of the line x equals zero, not just zero. All right, number 15 here, we have f of x equals x squared over x squared minus four. So first of all, let's factor this denominator. So x squared over uh, minus 4, difference of squares, x plus 2, x minus 2. All right, so now we see that neither the x plus 2 nor the x minus 2 will cancel with the factor in my numerator, so I know that these create vertical asymptotes. So x plus 2 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and I have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, the line x equals negative 2. I have a vertical asymptote at the line x equals 2. So both of those will be vertical asymptotes. All right, number 16 here, we have x squared plus nine. So if I try to solve the x squared plus nine, if I set it equal to zero, I can't factor it. So uh, let's see here, let's subtract nine from both sides and take the square root of each side. Now we can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real number answer. So I get an imaginary number, therefore I know I don't have any vertical asymptotes because I don't get a real number answer. So for number 16, there are no vertical asymptotes. So when we solve that, we got an imaginary number, not a real number answer. Okay. All right, so in this one, we want to determine whether the graph of the function has a vertical asymptote or removable discontinuity at x equals negative one. Uh, and then we can graph the function using a graphing utility. Now, uh, we'll look at Desmos as a graphing utility that we can use online. So 
Uh, first of all, let's just see what we have at uh, x equals negative 1 for this first one. So first thing I want to do is to factor my numerator here since it's not factored. And that will give us x plus 1 times x minus 1 all over x plus 1. Now, since I have an x plus 1 in my denominator and an x plus 1 in my numerator, and those factors will cancel if I continue to simplify, that tells me that the discontinuity is a removable discontinuity. And some graphs won't even show the removable discontinuity. Um, a lot of times we'll graph that as a hole in the graph where x equals negative 1. Uh, however, since, uh, like I said, since those cancel, we know it's a removable discontinuity. And that removable discontinuity at x equals negative 1. And I'll just write RD to represent removable discontinuity. Removable discontinuity. All right, number 31, we have f of x equals x squared plus 1 over x plus 1. Now, I can't factor x squared plus 1, and I know that x squared plus 1 will not simplify with the x plus 1 in my denominator. That tells me that that x plus 1 in my denominator would represent a vertical asymptote, uh, which is a non-removable discontinuity. So, in this case, the line x equals negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. Uh, therefore, we have a non-removable discontinuity, a non-removable discontinuity. And again, we know that because the factor in our denominator would not simplify with the factor in our numerator. Okay. All right, here we want to find the one-sided limit if it exists. Find the one-sided limit if it exists. So. Uh, the first thing that I would try to do is to substitute uh, whatever we are approaching in for x in our uh, function here. Uh, but however, if I were to substitute 1 in here, I would have 1 minus 1 in my denominator, which is 0, 0 squared. So I know I can't substitute 1 in. So let's see, as x approaches 1 from the left, that means we're looking at maybe let's say let's let x equal negative 2 let's let x equal negative 1 and let's let x equal uh, 0 as we're approaching 1 from the left if we're thinking about uh, the x-axis all right so if i substitute those in if I, if I substitute negative 2 in we have negative 2 minus 1 which is negative 3 and negative 3 squared is positive 9 so that's negative 1 ninth if I substitute negative 1 in, we have negative 1 minus 1 in our function in our denominator. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Uh, negative 2 squared is 4, so negative 1 fourth. And if I substitute um, 0 in, then we have 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and negative, and negative 1 squared is positive 1. However, that will give us negative 1. So we can see that um, as we go here that these numbers uh, are actually getting larger and larger. Since we're, we're going towards that negative 1, you see those numbers are getting larger and larger and larger. I'm sorry, <laughs> scratch that. Those numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Negative one ninth, uh, negative one fourth, and negative one. Those numbers continue to get smaller. Uh, therefore, this would actually be approaching negative infinity, which means that um, it decreases without bound and the limit does not exist. It approaches, it goes towards negative infinity, which means it decreases without bound and the limit does not exist. All right, number 36, uh, same thing. We have the limit as uh, of x squared over x squared plus four as two approaches, as we approach two from the left, as x approaches two from the left. 
So again, when I'm finding my limit, the you know, I want to, want to go through my process. The first thing that I would try to do is to substitute in to see if I could sub in. So I'm going to, I'm going to substitute the two in and see what we come up with. So we get two squared, which is four in the numerator, and then we get four. Uh, two squared is four, four plus four is eight in our denominator. So one half, therefore, we don't have to go through anything else. We know the, li the limit of x squared over x squared plus four as x approaches two from the left is simply one half. Okay, and number 51 here. All right, we have um, f of x equals one over x squared minus 25. Uh, we want to find the limit of that function as x approaches 5 from the left. So again, if we plug 5 in, 5 squared minus 5 squared is 25. 25 minus 25 is 0 in our denominator, and 1 over 0 would be undefined. Therefore, let's look at this thing and see what's happening as we approach uh, 5 from the left. So if we're approaching 5 from the left, just thinking about your number line, if this is 5, then you have 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and so forth. So I'm going to let x equal 0, x equal 1, and x equal 2, just to get an idea of what, what's happening here. So we know that um, we have this, these vertical asymptotes, so we know it's either increasing or decreasing without bound. Uh, and the limit does not exist, but let's see uh, what what is it approaching? Is this approaching positive infinity or negative infinity? Is it increasing without bound or decreasing without bound? So um, if we substitute zero in for x, we have one over negative 25, so negative 1 25th. If we plug one in for x, uh, we have one over negative 24. Now, if we plug 2 in for x, we get 2 squares, 4, and 4 minus 25 is negative 21. Okay, so again, these numbers are getting smaller uh, and smaller and smaller and smaller. And if it helps, you can convert those to decimals if that helps. But these numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So we know that this is approaching or is decreasing without bound, and therefore the limit does not exist. Okay, so let's uh, see about taking a look at Desmos.com and graphing uh, this number 51 here. Okay, so if we go to Desmos.com, Desmos.com, let's uh, start the graph here and let's see if we can... All right, and let's see what we have. Let's put the function in here. All right, so we have, uh, let's pull up the calculator here. We had f of x, and we'll just write it as y. Uh, y equals, one over, or one divided by, uh, x squared minus 25. So x squared minus 25. And let's um, zoom back out a little bit all right so you can see that at uh, as x approaches five from uh, as x approaches five from the right here on this bottom line you can see that this thing begins to decrease without bound so as x approaches five from the uh, from the left as x approaches five from the left you're looking at this bottom graph and this dec decreases without bound so you can use desmos.com to plug those in and that may help you out some to get a visual of these graphs and get a visual of the, the asymptotes and how they increase and decrease without bound all righty good people i hope you found this video to be helpful i will see you on the next one thank you